Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas, and we're here today with the Fronius iWave 230i. So this is the rebranded version of the, what was also known as the Magic Wave. Um, this is just the rebranded version, and it's uh, it's nothing new. It's just changing changed names. Uh, so the same functionality, but in this video, we're going to go over what it does, some of the newer features on it, um, and talk about why we they renamed it. And uh, but we'll go over right here. So I got everything out of the box. Um, I'm just going to talk about what, what comes with it. So. Coming with the machine, it, it does come in an air-cooled and water-cooled package. We have the water-cooled package here today. Right here is our TIG consumable kit, which is pretty cool. Comes with just some starter stuff for nozzles, collet, collet body, back caps, that sort of thing. Now the TIG torch, I'll show you that comes with that. It comes with a gas hose. And then this is pretty unique about Fronia. So they have the all these adapters. So it's a, it's a quarter turn. You go in, click, and it locks it in, but it's got all the plugs. Uh, for the adapter, so depending on what plug you're running, and it comes with all this stuff. Uh, right now, I got her plugged into 110, and you can see I got it on here. Super simple. I welded with this machine on 110 at 120 amps, and it works perfectly. It's it's pretty amazing. Uh, obviously, we get our ground clamp. Good thing about for me, real robust ground ground clamps in there. I don't like that about this these guys. So coming over here to the TIG torch. Um, this TIG torch here is obviously water cooled, right? We got our two water cables that plug into the front of the machine, our remote there that plugs into the front, and then our TIG torch. So one thing about this, this TIG torch, and you can order this, uh, there's different options, but we have a, you can change our amperage on our TIG torch and our polarity, and it's also got a light on the front of the TIG torch. Um, the head rotates as well. We just push that down and we can rotate that head. Now you can buy, and I'll show you this too, this will come out, yeah, line up the arrows, and we can change our TIG head on this unit. So, real unique to the iWave um, is this function right here. So we got customers out there that, that they'll buy multiples of these, so they'll put their right, fear cups on there, gas lenses, different style stuff, different tungsten, and then they'll pop their heads back, change out the head, and that's all they gotta do, and then they're on to a new consumable. You can also retrofit these, um, units to a CK torch and we'll link that all down below on the package as well so you can put a CK torch on this uh, iWave and that's pretty awesome sometimes people and what we'll be getting a lot of feedback on these they don't like all this remote ability where you can do all this on the TIG torch that's fine we can just let us know we can always change that out and make it right for you guys um, now it's an option so you have to pay for that sort of thing but we can do that so what I want I want to spin this machine to show you the back side of the we got our gas inlet there, our power switch, and then here's our plug. This is what I was talking about where it just a quarter turn, and it goes in and clicks, and you're locked in. So you can change out 110, 220 within a matter of seconds, and it's a very versatile machine. Very light machine, too. Now, I don't have water in this unit, but it's very light um, without the water, and it's not bad with the water in the unit. Water goes in the very front, comes with coolant. Uh, we got our two coolant ports here. We got our remote cable for the for the TIG torch or foot pedal, right? We could do foot pedal on that, two DINs inlets, got our menu button, our memory button there. This is gonna call out what we're doing as far as that goes, and then that's our purge button. So just to jump into the front functionality of the unit, um, you can get a Bluetooth foot pedal for this machine. Um, so it, it'll be a wireless foot pedal. It has RFID on it, so you can lock out parameters, certain style things. So that, that's one of the things when they upgraded to the name iWave, they have bigger iWaves, iWave, all the way up to 400 amp iWaves, and they're industrial machines. So this is just the smaller end of that same function as the bigger machines. So, so right now we got on DC negative, we can change our polarity right to AC. This little, this is a button and a toggle switch, so we're going to go to AC. Now, this is where people get confused, like what, what are we, why is all this stuff upslope, downslope? So our start current is 50% of what our main current is. We can change all this, so we can go 100%, so we get our max. We can, our upslope, so this is where, if you're doing a special type of weld and for a certain amount of time, it's gonna measure a certain amount of time and give you X amount of amps on your upslope. This is our main current, 50 amps. We can obviously, we can change that. We're going to change 120. Then we got our downslope. So when you're 
let off that foot pedal and it's coming out of the weld, it's going to weld for one second, dropping down to the end current, which is 30, 30%. We're going to change that to 100% just to keep it all the same. So some people get confused when they buy these and they're like, man, I don't, I don't want to mess with all that upslope, downslope. You don't have to. Just erase them, basically. Just go down, go to off, and then you don't have any of that stuff set. So then you just got 120 amps all the time. Um, just kind of a good thing to remember. You don't have to use that stuff. Here's our AC balance. So we want, and this is gonna, it's gonna be a little bit different from other manufacturers, right? So 50-50, so 50% on the positive, 50% on the negative, and then we wanna keep, right? So we're gonna go down to 25, because we want 75% of our, on our cleaning, 25% on our positive, we're gonna click a yes on that. Here's our electrode diameter, 2.4 millimeter. It's in millimeters. Um, we can, and then basically it's all metric, but we can change all that. Cap shaping. Um, if you want to put a ball on that, it will. So this says right there during the next weld start, hit OK. But we want to shut that off. So it'll put a ball on the end of your tungsten. Now, if you're a person who does a very sharp point, it'll put a little tiny ball on the end of that tungsten. It's pretty cool. I wouldn't, I mean, it's not for everybody, but it's a good function. And obviously, we're back to our polarity. DC negative right for stainless steel and mild steel and then AC for aluminum. So let's jump into the menu button and I was let's get back over to here. So we got TIG up at the top here and then we got stick welding. We got cellulose stick welding so this thing will run 6010 um, and you can change your hot start, bolt cut off and auto stick is all that. Then we have our how do we want to you know do we want high frequency what, what do we want? Two tap, four tap trigger. Same function was in this button here. Two tap, four tap, spot, timer on our TIG. So it's just the same. It's kind of a redundant setting, but it's up there on the top. Our gas, post flow, pre flow. Um, that's all up in there. And then cooling, we're going to click into that. Cooling mode is off. Now, if I were going to go to on on that unit, it's going to cook my water pump on, but I don't have water in there. So we're going to turn that off. And delay to time flow sensor. So how long that thing's going to run until it doesn't realize there's it doesn't need it? That's 10 seconds. And then the low coolant flow warning level is just how many liters per minute is going to tell us. Hey, you got low coolant. Pretty neat. Um, it tells you a lot of stuff. Um, show wel welding, show events, log book. So it's going to show you all the archon time, all the welding time this thing has, all the idle hour time this thing has. Gives you a lot of information. Not everybody uses all this stuff, um, but it is kind of cool to mess with if you're playing around. So this is another jobs. Uh, so we can program now our memory button. Like I said before, we'll go home. We got five up front. I think this thing will program up to a thousand memories. So you just go into job and you save a job. So say you were doing some pulse, um, DC pulse. You like that setting. You liked your upslope, your downslope. You call it a job hit it and then it'll always remember that job for whatever you call it for. Um, very cool that you can, and you can name it, right? It has an alphabet, you can choose letters. Um, and then easy jobs on favorite button, so you can hit that and then you can put a job on a favorite button if you're gonna use that, but up to a thousand settings on that, that's awesome. Huge memory. So display, this is gonna dig us into like the mechanics of this, the background, lighting, languages, date, time, system, data. We'll, we'll go into it just to show you. I think it goes down a little bit more. Expand parameter display, um, new system, user management administration. So all kinds of good stuff in, in there. Um, some of the, your serial number, your part number, and all that stuff is usually on the top of the machine, but it can be found in that too, on that display there. And then here's your serial number image version IP address because this thing has a uh, every one of them has an IP address because they are Bluetooth and RFID and that should be the last of the thing yep so we're gonna go back to TIG clock into that and then obviously tacking pulse frequency optic pulse pulse pro start current time slope so it has all that stuff and then we're not in AC because we're in DC but then we can change all that let's let's try that real quick Go to menu. Now we got our AC frequency. We can change that. And that's going to change, I believe that goes up to 250. Yep. So 250 hertz. Um, so competitors machines, you can change that as well. Some of the, this one goes up to 250. The bigger ones go up higher than that. Um, we're going to leave it at that just for time being. 
offset and then wave formation. We can change that. And, and if you're familiar with other competitors' machines, they have a hard, you know, hard rectangle, soft rectangle, triangle wave, and sinus wave or sinusoidal wave. We're just going to stick with that. Wave in the negative, you can change the waveform in the negative as well. It's pretty unique. And that's the end of that in the TIG. We'll go over to stick. Now this is, we're not in stick mode, but I'll show you what it has in there. So a hot start time uh, character is the eye constant, or, or constant current is what it's doing there. Anti-stick is on. So this would be if you're running 7018, 7024, 7014, that sort of thing. I'll click over here, and then this is the... There again, that's the uh, 6010 setting or the cellulose rod. We have hot start, voltage cutoff is 90 volts. That's the open circuit voltage, anti-stick there on that. So very neat settings though. Like I said before, we can do AC TIG, DC TIG, pulse on both, and we can stick well with this unit. Um, like the water-cooled version, air-cooled version, been very popular because of the 110 aspect of this thing. Like I said, I welded with them on AC 120 amps, 250 hertz on 110. And it welds great. And it, they're awesome how they weld. Um, very, very competitive in the, on how they weld characteristic wise. Um, I really enjoy welding with these Magic Wave, or the iWave, I'm sorry, and uh, I get so stuck on calling that. But if you also are looking for a manual or that, there's a QR code there too, always on the side of the machine. If you scan that, it'll pop up, and this thing has that IP address, it'll pop up its page. You can find some information on there. But if you've got any questions, comments, or anything, please leave them down below. We'll do our best to answer them. Thanks again for watching, and stay tuned for some more.